Hey folks, it's Tony here with Robo Financial. Thanks for joining us again. So today, uh, during benefit season, I want to talk about different benefits. Uh, but I want to start by saying the reason I think benefits are important to talk about is because I think a lot of benefits are left on the table by employees because there can be a lot of them and they're not easily understood. So I thought um, I would take the time to hit some of the highlight ones and how we think about things. Um, at this time of the year, we get a lot of questions from our clients asking us about their benefits and that's what we're here for. So anytime you have questions and want to go through things, um, we're here for that. One, you know, whenever I ask somebody like, you know, do you have this available to you and they don't really know, it, it shows to me at times that they're probably not taking enough time to go through the benefits and that's most people. But benefits these days can be about a third of your compensation, uh, you know, package. It's usually over 30% when we look at it on average. So if that's the average, you have some companies where the benefits are a lot more meaningful than that. So it really needs to be thought through and calculated, and that's what we're here for. But I want people you know, to take more time looking at their benefits package. So I just jotted some thoughts down. I'm gonna go through some of the bigger ones um, that we're talking about. Uh, a big one, of course, an ever-changing one is healthcare. Um, and so, you know, it, it's complete, it's evolving all the time. Um, evolving makes it sound like it's going in a good direction, but I don't know. Um, so, but it is a big part of the calculation. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about that. A lot of people kind of just default to a particular healthcare insurance without knowing much about it. But basically, these days, um, you, you're offered two choices. Uh, one would be probably more of a low deductible one, and one would be more of a high deductible one. Um, and they come in different categories, but this is just very general, um, whether it's an HMO, PPO on the low deductible side, and, and could be even on the high deductible side. But what comes into the calculation, I start with wanting to know about who I am talking to, and, and, and how much do they use um, medical services and need that insurance. So if you have somebody who has an illness already and they are routinely needing to see doctors and to get prescriptions, it may not make sense for you to do anything but take the low deductible one. And by the way, when I say deductible, I mean how much um, you have to pay before insurance kicks in. So the lower the deductible, the less out of your pocket before insurance kicks in. But if you're healthy, on the other hand, then it may make sense to take the high deductible plan. They're always less expensive um, because you know, you're putting more of the risk on you. But if you don't have that risk, well, why not do it? You also have the added benefit with a high deductible plan of having possibly an HSA available, a health savings account. If you have a health savings account, it really is one of the best accounts that you can have available because it's never taxed. It will go in to the health savings account before taxes. Um, it will grow tax deferred because if they get big enough, you could actually put some of that money into investments. And then when you pull it out, um, using it for metal costs, it won't be taxed either. Um, in addition to that though, some companies offer an FSA, uh, a flexible savings account on the medical side of things. So it can be used for the same medical expenses uh, but in, in it may be, it doesn't have to just be with a high deductible account, which HSAs are, uh, but you have a lot of flexibility with it. Not as much as it sounds like you have actually less with the flexible savings account than you do with the HSA. For instance, you lose all that money at the end of the year. Um, some companies can elect an option that will let you put like 500 over, uh, but for the most part, you have to use it or lose it. Uh, you also have a lot less of a limit. I'm not going to go to the exact numbers because um, I'm between 20 and 21, and, and I'm, I, I know I'd be butchering it, but it's something like 2,700 for, for, for the flexible savings account, and the HSA is something uh, like individually like 3,500, but can be like 7,000 for the person. So it, it's, it's a calculation. You can go back and look and say, how much in medical expenses did I use last year or you know the last five years in average? Um, and does it, so does that outweigh the savings that I'm getting from the high deductible plan? But again, t 
talk to your advisor, kind of go through that calculation, but take a serious look at it, okay? Um, the other thing about health insurance is we're seeing a lot more wellness plans. I know uh, with my wife's company, um, we take advantage of, you know, we get our walking track and our steps track, and that helps us every year to earn a few bucks. Um, and also might lower your insurance costs. So take a look at that and take it seriously. Anytime an insurance company is willing to give you a deduction to do something, it's in their own best interest. But in this case, you, you know, your, your interests are aligned and it's probably for your best health as well. So take advantage of that. The other thing about uh, work, a, a big benefit is um, life insurance. Um, and oftentimes you get part of a group term insurance, term versus whole life. Now, one of the good things about it is they don't check, do a medical check, and it is relatively expensive. But the two drawbacks are it's relatively limiting in size to what somebody really needs. And if you leave the company, um, you lose that term insurance in most cases which then puts you in a position of having to go get new insurance and now you might not have it through the next company and you're older and who knows you may have had a medical condition and that will make it more expensive for you if obtainable at all i've known relatively young people who have children who decided to finally go get some appropriate life insurance but they have a, a problem and they can't get any so it's a big drawback so um well the company how, uh, life insurance is great. I think that should somewhat be supplemental to what you're doing outside of work as well. So, so keep that in mind. Um, I always have to convince people too that you need appropriate life insurance, but also long-term disability. If you get hit by a bus tomorrow, financially speaking, sometimes um, just getting disabled can be worse than death. Um, and so anybody, I mean, a lot more people I think need disability insurance because if you can't work, for a long period of time, that needs to kick in and replace your income. So always take a look at that. Companies usually always offer that. Um, it should be up to about 60% of your income, but you know, keep an eye out for that as well. Another major category is retirement benefits. Um, you know, 401k, 403b, those are the common ones. As with all benefits, you know, I have to convince people that you're not taking 100% of your salary if you're not taking what's available to you in benefits. And, and you might not need some of them, but I'm talking about the ones that you need and are available to you, like a match in a 401k. Um, I believe that most people in almost all cases should be contributing at least enough in a 401k to get the match. Um, it can be up to 100%. Uh, but regardless, it might only be 25%, but it's something and it's free. Um, and, and know this too, that you know you, that match has a vesting period, meaning it's, it might be in your account, but until you've been there a certain period of time, and there's a couple ways that that can be done, um, you don't have access to that money. So it's gonna be in your account, it'll grow with your account, but if you leave before that money is vested from the company, um, then they will pull that back and they will use that as costs towards the 401k plan. 401k plans can have a pretty good cost, so keep that in mind. Um, as you make more income, <clears throat> oftentimes, you might have deferred comp um, offered to you as well. So there's a number of variables with deferred comp, and this is one you absolutely should be talking to your financial advisor about. Uh, but the one that's most common in a, in a public company, um, as opposed to uh, uh, in a nonprofit organization, for instance, um, is a, a non-qualified deferred comp. And basically what happens is instead of paying you, the money is channeled into a retirement account. But unlike a 403B, it remains on the books of your employer. So therefore, um, you know, depending on what happens with the company, if the company goes south, you can lose that money to creditors because it is on the company's books. The good news is you're you're not making that compensation in terms of taxes, so you're not being taxed on it. But you really have to weigh a number of things. So if you do have deferred comp available to you and you are taking advantage of you know, IRAs and 401ks and you're looking for other places, it, that may or may not be a good place for you, but it's worth having the conversation. 
so keep your eye out um, for deferred comp. Um, I had talked about the flexible savings account in terms of health care before, and now I'll mention it, it can be used as well for dependent care, up to like $5,000 a year. And oftentimes you'll get you know the old debit card um, that you can use. So the good thing is, as opposed to just getting paid and then writing a check to daycare, this is a way that you can use it before taxes, right? And if you're paid, depending on what tax bracket you're in, it's an opportunity for you to save a good amount of money. So if you have the flexible savings account with dependent care, um, keep you know that's separate from the health part of it, but take it, you might want to take advantage of that, you know, see if it's meaningful to you because you'll save money there as well. Um, it, but always again with all these, you know, talk to your accountant about it. One of the mistakes I made when I was younger, um, the company I worked for offered financial uh, education reimbursement, but I wasn't going to be at that company for a long time and I thought it wasn't fair. Um, and that was a larger company too. So I'm a lot more cynical today about larger companies. So I absolutely would have taken advantage of that. So many of them, I know somebody who actually um, worked in a financial company and got medical accreditations while he was working there, and it helped him segue um, to a new career that he had more of an interest in. But in either case, um, we talked a couple weeks ago about Zig Ziglar and about educating yourself. You should always be taking advantage of these, whether it's an online class, I mean, whether it's about getting an accreditation, learning more. I mean, if, if you're not taking free classes, um, you know, look at taking advantage of this because you should be educating yourself and looking to get more knowledge in either the field that you're doing or the field that you were thinking about you know going into so just a couple more things and and I'm not going to cover I know I'll miss something but I just wanted to look at these the other one I'll mention is <coughs> this isn't really so much a benefit from the company but it's a benefit from working for particular companies and getting employee discounts um, a lot of large companies especially um, you know, they work with a company like a cell phone company, and those cell phone companies want to get the business of those employees, so they will offer a discount to those employees. And very organized human resource companies will put, uh, you know, companies with a very organized human resource will list all those benefits um, and who they have them with. So whether it's a cell phone or, you know, whether it is uh, a shopping club membership at Sam's Club, um, see if they have employee discounts and then see if your company is eligible for it and if not see what they can do you know to be part of that and aside from your own company especially with smaller companies um, you might be part of more associations um, they tend to do that more whether it's the Chamber of Commerce or whether it's the, um, just different associations we belong to the Financial Planning Association and that is where I get my long-term disability so if you belong to associations, you know, look at those as well. Um, the last one I'll mention, which has become in increasingly common, is commuting benefits. So you can actually create an account um, before taxes on money that you know you're going to use for commuting um, outside of you just taking your car or the, you know, for the gas money. But it could be for actually parking if you have to do that, it could be for van pooling, um, the cost of that, right? They're trying to get people to uh, save money uh, and gas, uh, but at the same time probably help the environment, you know, cut down on cars on the highway. Um, another one is, is bicycling. That has been included as well. So if you are a regular bicyclist and you do spend money, you know, on a bicycle, uh, then you might be able to find it for that too. So. There's a lot, you know, I started obviously to get into ones that are a lot more um, or less common. Um, so check, the, the here, here's what I want to stress though. You know, go and look at all your benefits and see how you can use those, um, you know, to benefit yourself. Our company, I get my health care through my wife's company, but our company here at Rebel, we offer money to people who are contributing to an HSA, whether or not we're getting life insurance or health insurance through the company. Um, you just have to be eligible for the HSA. Make sure you are eligible. Don't put money in there if you're not. Um, so I just want to hammer it home. 
this is a time of year, take an hour or two, go through your benefits thoroughly, see what's available to you, see what you're missing. Get to understand them thoroughly. Don't leave that money out there, all right? Take advantage of it, so. Um, that's all I wanted to t talk about today. Um, you know, reach out to us. Glad to help walk anybody through kind of a calculation if what they're looking at makes sense or what they want to do. We are commonly having people change, for instance, their health care and what they're doing or what they're doing with their retirement plan. So anyway, thanks again for joining us. Um, until next time, um, you know, we look forward to hearing from you. Have a great Thanksgiving, and we'll be back soon. Take care.